What's going on, Tamers? Welcome to another Tamers Battle League snapshot here. Season 3, Week 5. I'm excited today because we have a brand new, completely brand new Top 4. Uh, shout out to our players. We had Gino taking 4th place with what he calls KFC. We'll get into that. Uh, Tessero 3rd with Black Hybrids. Kage CK 2nd uh, with Valkyrimon. And our 1st place finish this week was Avari with... Leviamon. So I'm excited that this is a brand new top four that we're going to talk about, which is is nice because we've been talking about the same decks for a little bit. Um, shout out to Varney as always for providing us our beautiful graphics here. But there's something we're going to add to our snapshots. We are actually going to go over the series rankings for the season. And if you guys don't know how TBL is constructed, it's based off a point system that will allow you to get your, your rankings essentially. So we're not going to touch on it too much. We're just going to kind of do a little quick look and see where everybody's at. You know, now that we're on week five, you know, there has been a good amount of, uh, of TBLs. So we'll be able to kind of see where the points have been allotted. So before we get into the deck list, let's take a look at where our rankings are for the season so far so this is pretty much what we've got uh in total we've had 31 different players that have participated in tbl this season and here are the rankings our top player is michael 74766 with 60 points moral atheist is in a close second tied with walter with 52 points and then avari rounds off our top four but just because you're out of the top four doesn't mean you can't squeeze yourself in. Lepi is very close with 34. Uh, Brito is very close with 30. So as long as you participate in the TBLs, every win knocks you some points. And, uh, you know, at the end of the season, we allocate everything and we calculate who the winner is for that season. So I just kind of wanted to give you guys a heads up in case you didn't know where you stood or if you don't really check, you know, statistics or anything like that as often as maybe any of us do. At least, uh, you know, you guys some have some information as to where everybody stands in the season this uh you know so far so um yeah shout out to everybody who has participated we really do appreciate the support and for anybody who's on the fence um it's it's good i mean if you're trying to get competition and you can't really get out to locals the next best thing is the webcam of course because you're playing with physical cards yes huang zero and his team over there have you know gifted us the dcgo simulator uh, which is a free to use property of course and it's a very great tool but nothing beats physical cardboard so if you're on the fence about it just give it a try um signups usually go live around i think wednesdays if you're watching this video it's a little bit later in the week um but you can get all the information in the discord so let's get onto the deck lists and see what we got cooking for this week Real quick before we go into Gino's deck list, I want to just give a quick shout out to all the dads out there, all of our digi digital dads that, <laughs> you know, take their time out of their day to support the channel and help and enjoy what we, you know, have come to love as a Digimon card game. This past weekend was Father's Day. I know myself and Varney have celebrated with our families, but if you guys are watching, if you if you have the gift of being a father, I just want to shout out all the dads. Happy Father's Day. Uh, and, you know, hopefully you guys are enjoying the Digimon card game as much as we are. So with that being said, Gino decided to take birds. Uh, he's calling it KFC. Now, I, I get it, right? But there's no yellow in here. So, I mean, there's yellow, but like not like an actual color. Like I, if, if I'm not mistaken, I know KFC is red and white, but I'm pretty sure it has some yellow sprinkled into there. I could be totally wrong. I don't really eat KFC too much. I'm a more of a Popeyes guy. Shout out to Popeyes. Popeyes chicken's freaking awesome. Anyway, I'm getting off tangent here. Uh, so Gino took birds. I love Biomon. Biomon is one of the cooler Digimons from the original Adventure series, and its e evolution line is also really awesome. I think it takes a more patient and a, and a better pilot. And what I mean by that is sometimes when things don't go the way i want them to like on paper or like testing everything works out but when you play an actual game you have rng you brick and stuff like that sometimes when things don't go my way i i tend to like shell out and like turtle up and i really hate that so something like this that i have no experience in diving in and having to learning from the ground up will definitely frustrate me i'm not saying i won't get there eventually this is definitely something that would be fun to pick up and play i love the artwork on the beamon cards the line is very nice red has some really good tamers and options 
Uh, and I, I do like the way it plays out. Like, I like the idea of, you know, the phoenix rising from the ashes and all that. So, yeah, I mean, just for right now, like, shout out to Gino. You know, this this man is a lot braver than I am. Um, I mean, but he's got results, right? We did have 10 players uh, in our TBL this week, and he took top four with this. So, I mean, we can sit here all day and go over everything. Uh, I, I know that there's your main searcher, which I believe is is this one. This is the main searcher because she grabs a red tamer and a vaccine. Uh, and on deletion, if you have a tamer in play, you gain a memory. So that's nice. This is another searcher, I believe. If played with by ret if if played by an effect by returning one Christie to the hand. I mean, did you evolve into Guru and ignoring the call? Okay, so that's how you climb. It has a drawing inheritable. I think is this a searcher? Start your main by trashing one Digimon card with avian bird beast animal sovereign. All the sea animals, traits, real top four, add one red card among them to the hand, return the rest of the bottom of the deck. Okay, so yeah, I mean, the skills are good, the inheritables are good. Uh, you know, rookies with really good inheritables are always valuable. And then you have your Bergermons here. This one's a blocker, and an on deletion, if you were to trigger any of your, you know, rookie effects, you get that. And then this on deletion for the inheritable is play one red tamer with cost for four from your hand without playing the cost. So. That's the inheritable on deletion. When digivolving, return one red Digimon card with AV and it is traits from your trash to your hand. Okay, so there's a lot of deletion. There's a lot of returning stuff to the hand. There's a lot of really solid inheritables here. Um, what does Saber Dramon do again? Saber Dramon. Raid and Retaliation, return one Rider Purple Digimon card. Okay, so there's a lot of just like if you die, like like I said, Phoenix from the Ashes. If you die, you grab pieces from the um, the trash. Now, interesting, I, I wonder. Bergeron is technically a drum on, right? So does Cordramon from Starter Deck 8 search this, or Starter Deck 7 search this? Because Cordramon, if I'm not mistaken, is on play. Look at the top three cards and add a Digimon with Dramon in its name. I wonder if Cordramon searches these Bergermons. I'm pretty sure it does. Because it's just Dramon, Dramon, Dramon. But I'm pretty sure in Digimon lore, if I'm not mistaken, and this is probably a question for Gino because he's the the Jeopardy wizard here. I feel like in lore of Digimon, if if your if your name is a Dramon, like D Dramon, like D-R-A-M-O-N, you're a dragon. I, I I feel like I've read that or heard that. Like if if your name ends with Dramon, you're you're some type of a dragon. I could be totally wrong. Don't crucify me for that. But anyway, let's get on. <laughs> let's get moving. Garudamon on play with Digivolving. Play a red tamer. Cost of three or less from your hand without being... Okay, so she plays these. <laughs> and on deletion, delete one of your opponents. 6k. Okay, so you have... Your your rookies give you the utility inheritables. So you have gain a memory, draw a card, gain a memory. Your Bergermon inheritables give you the same thing. Gain a memory or recur or play tamer, rather. Play tamer... Play Tamer, gain memory, recur from trash. So there's a lot of different utilities here with the inheritables. This skill is really good too because it allows you to play your Soras and your Christies and your Akios really for, for, for free, you know, especially when Digivolving. Most of the time we've seen when Digivolving effects on champions that play Tamers, but it's nice having it climb up the ultimate ladder. And this inheritable is also really good too. Um, on deletion, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 DP or less. I guess you could make the argument if you wanted to play the Gigimon egg that adds 1,000 to DP threshold deletion, you could do that. But I feel like this Yokomon is right what you want because it adds um, stuff from trash to hand. So you'll you'll be able to kind of um, piggyback off of that with other inheritables up the chain. Uh, we have this Garudamon. Garudamon Ace is just an awesome card. Hand Counter Blast Digivolution on play when Digivolving. Play uh, cost four or lower Tamer from your hand without paying the cost. Another way of playing Tamers out for free is really nice, especially on your opponent's turn. And then all turns when one of your Tamers is played, you can delete a Digimon with Blocker. So that's really nice. There are a lot of Digimon in the card game right now with Blocker. Now, I'm pretty sure if I'm not mistaken, if Magnamon X goes and swings without protection, Magnamon doesn't gain its one digit evolution skill until the security is checked. So hand counter happens before the attack has been resolved. Therefore, it misses the check. Therefore, if you go ahead and blast Digivolve 
over a champion while Magnemon X is swinging, there's no layer of protection, you can go ahead and pop it because it does have blocker printed as a keyword skill. That's a really nice way to remove Magnemon X. I'm pretty sure that's how it would work if it has no protection. Obviously, if it's swinging with protection already, there's nothing you can do. But if Magnemon doesn't check the security and it's just swinging freely for 12k, you can go ahead and blast Digivolve Evolve into the Garurumon and just clear it off the board. Um, yeah, that's a really good skill. And then we have Garudamon X Antibody. Digivolve for free over Garudamon on play with Digivolving. Return one red Digimon card from your trash to the hand. Then if Garudamon or X Antibody is in the source, delete one of your opponent's Digimon. Which, uh, with as much DP or less as this Digimon. So 8k. So yeah, you're deleting anything same level or lower. And then your turn when a red card returns from trash to hand. One of your Digimon gain Rush. That's really nice. That's a really good card. Phoenix Mon here, real quick, we'll go over it on play on deletion. If your opponent has three or fewer security cards, delete one Digimon with the lowest DP. If you have four or more, trash the top card of security stack. So either way, you're getting an effect. Most of the time, you're just going to be uh, on deletion. When Digivolving, play a red Digimon card with 5,000 DP or less, or a red Tamer card from your hand without paying a cost. That's nice. So like I said, Phoenix, you know, rising from the ashes, this guy dies, gets an effect, plays another body out, you're you're good to go next turn. <laughs> Phoenix Mon X Antibody when Digivolving Blitz, okay. 13,000 DP is nice. Digivolve for two over a Phoenix Mon, okay, so that's that's a little hefty for an X Digivolution. Uh, when Phoenix Mon or X Antibody is in the source, end of attack, all of this Digimon's odd deletions effects. Okay. Wait. Well, attach end of attack to all this on the, on the lesion. Oh, okay. So end of attack on the lesion. Okay. So basically, if you have a Phoenix Mon in the source, you get end of attack and you trigger your on deletion. You can play one 11,000 DP or lower Digimon card with Avian, basically your bird, uh, and its traits from your hand without paying the cost. Delete one of your opponent's Digimon with as much or less DP. That's awesome. So basically, Phoenix Mon X allows you to swing, trigger, play Phoenix Mons, which triggers on plays here. But you also have on plays from Garudamon. That's really nice. That's that's awesome. That's like a really well thought out Digivolution line. I really like that. I know we're spending a lot of time on this deck, but these are cards that we haven't really gone over yet. Wings of Love is a two cost option. You can play a red tamer with four or less from your hand without paying the cost. Then if you have a tamer with Sora in its name, you can return a red Digimon card from your trash to your hand. This is awesome because this option allows you to mitigate the cost of your tamers and also adds you a piece, right? So you can, for two, play either of these, because obviously Sora is a four cost tamer, so you can't play that one. So you can play either Christy or Akio for two, and then you get a piece from your hand. This is a really awesome card if you have a Sora in play. And then its security is you can play a Beamon from your hand or trash out paying the cost and add this card to your hand. Really good card. I really like that a lot. Crimson Blaze, we all know what it does. Delete, you know, up cost, a cost of up to 6,000. Uh, delete all of your opponent's Digimon. I'm sorry, with 6,000 DP or less, and then they can't play anything with the skills. And it also gets reduced by your opponent's board presence. Offensive training, we know. X protoform, we know, because this makes it a one cost Digivolution, which is nice. And this makes it, I was already free, but it keeps it free. And um, with the deletion effects, you know, this is nice because you're going to constantly bounce your protoform back into your stack, and essentially recover and then get it again. As far as tamers are concerned, we have Akio on play, reveal the top four, add a red Digimon card with vaccine and his trains to your hand, place the rest of the bottom deck and yours. A search tamer is nice. When you play a red Digimon with bird or avian, which is what we have to worry about here, um, <laughs> in the traits, by suspending this tamer, the Digimon gains rush for the turn. So that is really awesome because there's a lot of on deletion skills here, right? So. If you go ahead and slam a Beomon on the board, that Beomon gains a rush. Normally there'd be summoning sickness. And then any Digivolution stack that you build on top of that Beomon will transfer the rush up. So you can essentially go play a play this, play a, you know, this is out, play a Beomon, search, suspend, gain rush, go into Saber Germon. You can raid and it has retaliation. So it's gonna kill whatever you know, whatever it is that you want, and you're gonna gain your inheritable here. Or you can go ahead and use any one of these other Bergemons. If you have enough memory, you can climb even further up into the stack. It's just a really good utility card. 
Christy Diamond, starting your main if you have a Digimon with Bird or Avian, gain a memory. Okay, so Prince Memory. <laughs> On play, one of your Digimon gains. On deletion, you may play a Beamon from your hand or trash without paying the cost. So these two, Christy and Akio, work really, re really well off of each other. She plays something without paying cost. She gives it rush when it's played. Really good card. And then Sora, I'm assuming, is your memory tamer. And then when, Digim when a red Digimon card is returned from your trash to the hand, by returning this tamer to the hand, you can play one thirteen thousand DP or less red Digimon with Avian Bird traits. Without paying the cost for each for each of your opponent's security, remove two thousand from the playable from the deep from the cards DP from playable. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, at, at most you can slam a, a Phoenix Mon on the board for each security removed. So if they have five security, you're removing ten k. So you're, this is more of a late game thing. Um, you want to probably get to your threshold to like two security so when your opponent has two security left you're only losing 14,000 or 4,000 rather so that's going to allow you to start slamming your ultimates obviously if you get down to one security you can start playing your megas and if you have no security you can slam phoenix mod on the board for free so yeah i mean i like this this is cool um i'll give my pick of the week at the end because i want to go over everything before i make an educated decision because we don't know what a lot of these decks are doing but shout out to gino for a top four with with the birds on to our third place finish we have black blockers now i know this layout is different mother is over here mother's the egg i guess when you do level sort it does sort by level but because mother doesn't have a level it probably triggers dp so when i did that i was like where the hell's the egg but this is the egg mother is your egg i i think i know what this deck wants to do there's a lot of cards in here that say give blocker to something. Uh, I know Mercury Mon does that. I know this Metal Grey Mon does that. So I'm pretty sure the whole strategy behind this, I think I might have played against a deck like this on the Sim. You want to get your big eggs out. You want to give them blocker and just watch your opponent cry because there's not much they can do. So yeah, I mean, this is like black hybrids. You're playing 8, 10 hybrids. So I totally get it. Um, you're playing 10 hybrids, but you're only playing three. <sighs> really? Woo! Excuse me. Let me take a sip of my accelerator energy drink. <clears throat> because I don't have coffee. Um, you're only playing nine tamers and 10 hybrids, so... <sighs> That's fine, though, because you could still use these as Digivolution on our... Well, there's no rookies. So how did... How does this work? See, like, now I'm like, hold on. Because this is when Digiva... Okay, I'm play. Okay, so you're just slamming Mercury Monster to the board and giving Mother Blocker or Death X Blocker or Quartz Mon Blocker. Like, you're just giving that stuff Blocker. <laughs> and then Sephiroth is... When Digivolving, one of your points gains this card attack. So you're forcing them to attack. Edamon does this force attack thing. This Metal Greymon, I'm pretty sure. When did you evolving? You give Blocker. Yep. Okay, so we're. I'm kind of seeing the trend here. This Numamon is on play. Play the Tamer, right? And then Blocker Inheritable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Solid. Once per turn, when you play another Digimon by effect, Blocker. Yeah. So this is essentially big, big ass Blockers, and then sit on your level five so you can Ace. Because you have so many aces in this deck. You have Dioboromon, you have Vikemon, Mega Gargo, Valkyrie. You have like the rainbow of aces. Uh, Shadow Seraphi is just a really good card as a Mega. Death X is Death X, Quartzmon is Quartzmon. So yeah, this is like this is like the type of deck where it's just like, here you go, figure out what you're gonna like try to figure out what you're gonna do. I like the force attack here with Sephirothmon. I like the force attack with Edamon and Laplace's Demon. I like all that. Uh, and it's gonna, f like, like what, what Numamon does, right? It forces you to attack it to Edamon so you can blast into Valkyrie. So that's nice. Um, having black base aces is really good too because these are free targets over any level five that you have here, which is nice. I would hate to play against this deck. Like this is one of those decks that just triggers my anxiety and yeah, I mean, sometimes you got to build these types of decks just to, you know, just to check your opponent. This card is incredible, this format. I mean, promoting a rookie and losing to memory is disgusting. P 
Patamon's never going to move out of raising, so you're never going to trigger the start of main unless you hard, hard slam it on the table. Um, giving blocker... Uh, here's your memory... T well, you have two memory tamers, essentially, but this allows you to... Is there an X target? Uh, X antibody or Digipolice? So there's no X antibodies. And I think this is the only Digipolice. So I guess technically you could feed it to a Numemon, but I don't know if you want to do that. There's no X antibody. Well, I think Death X, right? No, never mind. Death S is not X antibodies. X program. Yeah, so you're not going to really trigger Shu Yu Lin's Mind Link too much. You can trigger, though, however, Numemon wants him on Digipolice. I mean, I, t I guess technically you could do that with the Numemon. Trident Arm. I know Varney really likes this card because it's DD Evolve 3 and then forced to attack. That's really strong. Yeah, I mean, this deck is toxic. I mean, <laughs> this deck is one of those, like, scratch your head decks, but we don't argue with results. This is definitely, like, forcing your opponent to play into your strategy, though. So they really can't just do what they want, right? Like, they have to respect what it is that you're doing. Against a deck like this, you hope that they brick and they get a slow start because, like I said, you're never digivolving here uh, in raising. You're never digivolving in raising, so you're, you're you're already losing a draw early in the chain. And most of the time, you're hard slamming. You're hard slamming champions. So like six, six. This one's not terrible at three, but you're only playing two of this. This is not terrible at five, but you're only playing two of this. So most of the time, you're slamming your sixes. Granted, you have to wait a turn to promote your mother out of raising before you start giving blocker. But most of the time, you're slamming these guys unless you want to give up a tamer. Um, yeah, I mean... Defense training, I guess, to reduce Digivolution from champion to ultimate. That's the only thing I could think of, because most of these guys cost four. Except for uh, Mame and Metal Grey. <laughs> um, or if I, I dare say you want to Digivolve into your Megas on your turn, you could do that. Uh, force attack, force attack, force attack. Yeah, I mean, this is insane. <laughs> Shout out to our third place finish with black hybrids, but I'm just calling this mother blocker because this is essentially what you want to do. You want to utilize your mother that can't really do much and just give her blocker. She's a big 15k blocker that you you can't uh, you can't interact with really. So, yeah. Okay, <laughs> moving on to our runner up, we have <sighs> Valkyrie Mon. Yeah. Valkyrie Mon DNA. I like this. I mean, I'm a big fan of the O2s. O2 is my favorite season. And I feel like outside of Davis and Ken, a lot of the guys got shafted. Um, you know, especially in the original series, they didn't go past Ultimate. And even in the O2, the beginning movie, they didn't give them their official Megas. So we, I guess we technically still don't even know that. But I like the fact that they printed support for the other O2 kids. Like this Lynxmon here is another um, armor that you can go on Gatsumon that's not um, Neferidimon because Neferidimon is garbage. But this is just awesome, right? Like the, the artwork is awesome. Raided armor perch is really great. When did you evolving one of your opponents? Digimon gets minus 3k for the turn. That's really good. It plays into the whole red yellow strategy of killing stuff and DP neg. Um, like, uh, like, am I just why don't i see an egg here like maybe they just forgot to put the eggs in but there's no way you're not playing this deck without eggs right what egg are you playing maybe the po is it poyomon the new one i think is a poyomon yeah i mean this is probably just a, a a little snafu there with the with the lack of eggs because i don't see this deck being this egg I don't see this deck being played without eggs. I would have made this my pick of the week just because of how interesting it is, but there's no eggs here. So I don't even know where the lines are, but you have your Hawkmons, you have your Searchers, you have your Armors. I'm surprised no, um, because this is an armor over Gatomon, right? So why? I'm surprised no like Hulsimon or like, what's the other one, Shurimon? the ninja with the stars because you do have a good amount of hawkmons you're playing a lot of rookies here this is an armor deck that you, there's no armor over salamon because it's got him on oh th is this it yeah okay but it's two yeah okay so this is your hawkmon armor harpy mon but i'm surprised no like i mean i guess Hulsimon is blue red and shurimon is blue is red green but 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like you might want to play up more. I mean, I guess if you're going for the full send on the Valkyrie line, it doesn't matter because you're more focused on DNA and your Sylphimons are here, so that's fine. But I'm surprised there's no more armors down low. Um, you probably could have got away with a Shurimon. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I forget what their effects do. I know. I, f I forget what Hulsimon does too. Yeah, and this is interesting. I mean. I, you're full sending Valkyrimon. That's I mean, that's totally what it is. You want to climb into your Valkyrimon as fast as possible. You want to get your Sylphimons out, you know, because the new Digivolutions and DNAs have partitioned. So, this Sylphimon is also really good too from BT8. Uh, I like this card a lot. Um, and you're, 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 you're yellow, so your, your top end is Ruin Mode. Obviously, Blitz Omni for game. Blitz Greymon. Okay, real quick. When Digivolving, activate one of the effects. Did D Digivolve one on three of your opponent's Digimon. You're never triggering part two. And this Digimon and one of your other Digimon may DNA into... Okay, so does that mean you're just doing this for the D, D Digivolve one on three? I guess. Blitz Greymon is a good card. It's a one of, so it's cheeky. I mean, you do have the Omnimon, so you will trigger the Inheritable here on the one attacking. So our Omnimon essentially will check check a security. So it's it's Omni for game with one security if you have Blitz Gray. That's interesting. I mean, that's fine if if. I mean, because Chimeramon's gonna be red anyway when you tuck a source, so you could go ahead and do that. You're never gonna hit black in this deck. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's fine. DNA two champions. Yeah, so Chimeramon works. So it's just... Yeah, I mean, this is interesting. This card's just really strong. So, I, I mean, just alone with this card, it's worth it to play any type of Valkyrimon variant. <laughs> um, super interesting. Ruin mode top end when yellow. Heaven's judgment, obviously you're in yellow. Trident Gaia. I've been i I've been seeing Trident Gaia pop up in a lot of lists. Delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the highest DP. If a Digimon with 13k or more is deleted, trash the top. So it's nice because you get a double whammy off of it, right? There's a lot of big Digimon in the format right now. Like just off the top of my head, um Fighter Mode Ace is 13k printed, and he's most of the time gonna be 14k with inheritables. So a Trident Gaia. Uh, Fire Mode Ace, Overflow 4, you kill him and you trash the security, you're playing this for 4. That's sick. I mean, the other, um, the other Mega Aces are 12k. You'll still get the Overflow, obviously, because you killed them, but you won't get the security effect to trash the security, but still, you're playing a removal for 4, so that's great. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, this hits Death X. Yeah, this is a good card. This might be the next, like, red, like, removal staple outside of, like, Crimson Blaze, I, I would think. Um, that's just a really strong effect. Beastly Storm Dance of Affection. Play one Aquilamon or Gatamon from your hand. Oh, so this is in Invincible Dragon Insect Fusion, but for red-yellow? Okay, yeah, for then two Digimon Dina. Uh, yeah, so this, this is essentially it. Just the flavor is more tailored towards Kari and Yuli. Uh, this is the promo Yoli, start a main for regain and memory. Okay, on play, uh, you can play a Hawkmon or Digivolve into Aquilamon. Okay, so they're basically like the same as Davis, but for their archetype. And then Yoli and Kari, start a main, Hawkmon or Salamon from your hand. So essentially, Davis can. One of your Digimon, um, red, yellow, suspending a tamer, DNA, one your, minus 3k. Yeah, okay, solid. I mean,. From like here this way, from like from like Valkyrimon down is super solid. Like I totally get it. I don't really get this too much, and the lack of um, armors, I guess, because you only really have what three harp, two harpy, and one Lynx. Yeah, I mean, eh. you can't. Again, you can't argue with results. This is just my opinion. What I'm seeing on paper, I would really love to see what egg you're playing. I'm assuming it's Poyomon. Uh, but you do have a yellow rookie and a pur yellow purple rookie. So are you playing a yellow? I don't think you're playing a yellow base. It's got to be a red base. One, two, six, ten. You have ten red rookies, essentially. It's got to be red egg. Anyway, um, yeah. 
I'm just gonna say this is my pick of the week just because I'm interested in, in what he's got cooking here. I would really love to see what egg he was using. Um, and Silphimon's just an awesome DNA. On to our winner, Leviamon. So we've gone over Leviamon decks before, so there's not too much that we're gonna talk about here. Uh, but Leviamon's just very, very strong. You know, Biting Crush, Seventh Lightning, really strong options. You're in purple, so your top end is either Death X or Shine Gray, or Ruin Mode rather, if you want. You're still playing the usual suspects here with these two, even though they're limited, they're very strong packages. They allow you to dig, they allow you to draw, they allow you to see pieces, because it adds X pieces, essentially. Um, the one of Anubis Mon, I mean, it's just, Leviamon's very good. You have to be very careful when you're building a board against Leviamon, because it's gonna trigger both, both, um, both aspects of its deletion. Um, yeah, so, I mean, X Antibody, obviously Swing, Digivolve for free, you have a lot of different targets for that. Is this the resurgence of Leviamon? He did kind of fall off a little bit going into BT15 uh, after, because Leviamon's at EX4, right? EX5. So Leviamon's an EX5 card, so it definitely had its, it definitely had its run early and it kind of fell off as we progressed through BT15. I guess people just kind of figured it out. I know Varney was on this deck for a while and then just stopped playing it. So is this the resurgence of Leviamon? Does Leviamon have a good uh, matchup into the format? Is it a good meta call? Is this more of like something that's maybe not tier one or tier two? Is this like more of like that? I'm playing the best deck to answer the meta. I am not sure, um, but it's nice to have a brand new top four. These are four completely new decks that we have not seen. So it's nice to have that. Um, you know, I encourage your creativity. If you guys are watching, if you guys are players, I encourage your creativity. TBL is a great space to test stuff that's off the cuff, you know? Um, and that's what we kind of got with the black hybrids. That's kind of what we got with the Valkyrie Mon and the birds, you know? So, you know, play something that you want to play because you want to enjoy it and have fun with it right this is not a regional there's there's not a lot on the line yes there's prizing i understand everybody wants to win but these are the perfect opportunities for you guys to take advantage of playing against like-minded people and what i mean by that is yes the sim is a very good tool because it allows you to test anything without any you know um budgetary restrictions right however sometimes the quality of decks that you're playing against on there are like-minded you know oh, i'm just gonna play this jank or whatnot so if you want to get a better sample size you definitely want to play against people in real life even though it is over webcam it's still an actual like you know physical cardboard uh tournament so yeah this was our tbl for for uh, season three week five i hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown i know it was a little longer than usual because we're going over newer cards and newer decks uh but let me know in the comments down below if there's anything that you'd like to see different i hope you guys are appreciating everything that we're doing here for you at dgu we're trying to make this uh as a, a community-based channel as much as we can you know giving back you know as far as TBL is concerned, just having stuff for you guys to do. And we definitely appreciate and we encourage interaction. Don't be afraid to comment. Don't be afraid to interact, you know, through conversation with us. Please join the Discord uh, so we can keep the conversation moving. We're all growing together. We're all part of the same great community. Let's keep it positive. Uh, with that being said, we're going to get on out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one.